Hey guys, time for a little video. I just found this among my uh, seedlings. I'm moving all my plants inside, including the grafting stocks. And this was one of the grafting, grafting stocks. So you can see there's an infection here. And uh, what's worse, this is a witch's, witch's broom infection. Like, there's something called witch's broom disease that makes plants pop repeatedly. And they don't pop like with healthy growth like you normally see. They pop like this. There are some hairy, weird pops. And then these pops often pop again. So they keep popping and popping and popping. They basically pop themselves to death. And uh, yeah, it's not it's not a good good growth. It's not something that you would like want to have. I've seen people that really started to collect these like as some some form of like crest or variegated plants. And I can I can assure you these just don't look good when they when they grow. It's absolutely like pathological growth. You can really see that these plants don't look healthy. And uh, yeah, let me put it here so you can see it some more. Yeah, um, this also happens on larger plants. It also happens on plants that are planted out, especially in uh, countries like, I don't know, Spain, Italy. When you plant them out and don't care for them, this is the type of stuff that they get. And uh, it is infectious, so it's not like completely, it's not as incredibly in infective as other stuff. But it's one of the problems that I would really look out for, especially when I'm like having a large garden, planting, I don't know, 30, 40 plants outside. And you have one of these in between. Um, yeah, another thing that you can reliably see on them is this felt. They grow more felt, more uh, more hair than they normally would. And uh, when I see these hairy pups, I always instantly know that this is not good. That this is a witch's broom disease. And I really recommend that you like throw them away because I wouldn't even put these on the on the compost bin. Um, there are some mites, like spider mites, for example, that can like induce this. It's not entirely caused by spider mites, but they play a role. Simply when you have a plant that is neglected, sick, and it kind of opens the door for the infection. The mites create all these little little micro injuries and then you have the witch's broom disease that jumps on top. Yeah, Phytoplasma is the uh, name of the pathogen but there are more that can cause a similar damage pattern. So yeah, I will throw this one away. It's not a huge problem. In my opinion, you sometimes find these in a in a huge like you know when you have a lot of a lot of seedlings, you you can sometimes find one in between that just isn't as healthy. And yeah, this is what they often get. And I can really recommend if you have something on a plant, remove it and improve the general health of the plant. That's something that very often leads to recovery. It's not 100% reliable, but this kind of stuff goes hand in hand with a weak immune system, with with sickly uh, plants that just that have been like left out in the in the shade or in the wilderness and haven't been cared for properly. And yeah, if you leave it and do not interfere, this can take over whole collections. I've seen videos from like from Spain, where a, a whole garden looked like this. And it was really sad because 
some of the plants were really nice so yeah witch's broom disease this one goes right into the trash <laughs>